Hey guys, Tony DeNaro here. We got some great news to share with you this evening about GameStop. I'm also going to talk about AMC, Sundial, Highcroft Mining, and Mullen. So if any of those interest you, be sure and stay tuned. And don't forget to keep an eye out for the live that we have planned for tonight for you. 8.15 p.m. Central, 9.15 p.m. Eastern. Let's get right into the details. Okay, right out of the gate, let's start off talking about GameStop, the big news. It's been kind of a crappy week in the market after the run-ups that we had on Monday, the run-up on Tuesday, the hard stop on Tuesday morning, the halts, all that nonsense. And we had to endure Wednesday and then again a down day today. But GameStop came in clutch after the market closed today, announcing at the next shareholder meeting, which is probably going to be the first week of June, that they would like to issue additional shares of stock with shareholder approval, increasing the float from $300 million to $1 billion. And they plan on doing a stock split via a stock dividend. At least that's the news that I'm reading today. So I'm anticipating a three for one stock split that will be paid out via stock dividend that is different than a cash dividend. And this could be an absolute short slash synthetic killer. This is very exciting news. Whether they do the split through a dividend or they do a split plus a stock dividend is really irrelevant. The fact remains that the dividend must be paid with stock and shorts are not able to pay a dividend with stock. Yes, if you have shorted a stock, you are responsible for paying that dividend. And there's just no way that a short can pay a stock dividend. I cannot overemphasize how exciting news this is. GameStop is up to $195 now in the aftermarket. That is $28 up 17%, a massive run, massive sign of support from the GameStop community, institutional investors, or maybe somebody trying to get out of the stock because this is going to be bad news for the shorts in short order. Don't forget the date that we are looking at on this is going to be most likely early June, whenever the next quarterly shareholder meeting is. We'll have more discussion on this between now and then. And if you have other questions, be sure and join us on the live tonight and get those answered from a great panel. Now let's move into AMC Sundial, Highcroft Mining, and Mullen. All right, starting off with AMC, let's take a quick look at the chart. AMC is getting some love Thanks to GameStop, currently up 4% in after hours, $25.72. It's been a rough week for AMC, just like it was with GameStop. We had this big run up on the 28th, my birthday, Monday, followed by a massive run up on Tuesday morning. A hard stop at $34 as the shorts and the day traders said no. Rejected AMC at $34. GameStop got a similar rejection. And then on the way down came that halt. I'm not going to talk about the halts a whole lot. Everyone's already talked about that. I know there has been some discussion about maybe there should have been a halt on the way up. That's open to debate depending on how you interpret the candles. Really not important. I don't want halts on the way up anyways. There was a halt on the way down and that was a market volatility halt and that was not what caused AMC momentum to die. It was the smackdown at $34 that killed it. I looked at the time in sales and once we got around $30.30, .30, there was a lack of buyers, a lack of buyers again at $30.07, and we really had a lack of buyers at 30 bucks. Fortunately, we were able to recover that day. Wednesday and today were a little more painful, but I still feel pretty confident, especially with the news on GameStop, that tomorrow, Friday, could be a great day for AMC. I still am holding for a price target of $30 to $35 by close on Friday. Not financial advice, that's just my guess, just my opinion. I think we could get some really good tailwinds off of this news, some good momentum on both GameStop and AMC moving into the end of this week. 
Stay tuned tomorrow and let's find out. All right, next, let's talk Highcroft Mining ticker symbol HYMC. As you probably already know, AMC bought an interest in Highcroft Mining. We had massive retail interest in Highcroft Mining when this was announced on March 10th with a move up in the stock price from 60 cents to over $2. In fact, it went up to $2.38. After that initial run up, there was some consolidation around $1.35 to $1.40 for a period of weeks with some renewed interest from investors starting on March 25th. The stock is currently trading at $2.30 after hours. Even Highcroft Mining got a little bit of a jump due to the AMC and GameStop moving. It is up 4.78% at $2.40 in the aftermarket. Now, I want to talk with you for a second about my own personal price target for Highcroft Mining, how I came to that number, and why I have not bought Highcroft Mining yet. This is either gonna be brilliant or a horrible mistake. Again, I guess we're gonna to have to wait a few weeks to find out. But my price target where I'm willing to buy Highcroft Mining is right around a dollar a share. Now I'm going to give you the news of why I think the price on Highcroft is still a little bit overdone and why I think you can afford to wait for a good entry into Highcroft Mining. Let's look at what the CEO of Highcroft Mining just said. I will put a link to this article in the video description if you want to read the entire thing at your leisure, but I want to cover a couple of points that I think as an investor, it is important for you to know about Highcroft. I did cover these a couple weeks ago on March 10th when AMC made the announcement. And now we have the exact same thing that I told you a couple weeks ago, but from the CEO herself. Let's see what she had to say. Highcroft Mining CEO told Benzinga she is confident in the company's process as it has resulted in over 2 million ounces of gold since the 1980s. But getting into the meat of it in this next paragraph is the fact that they have no active production going on right now. And this is the most important reason why I think you can afford to wait for a good entry into Highcroft Mining. In early 2023, a year from now, the company will shift its focus to detailed design work in relation to scaling the operations, followed by construction. Project construction is expected to last between 18 and 24 months, Garrett said. She goes on to say, for right now, we've got sufficient cash to get us plenty of runway down the road and to be able to do the work we need to do, which is exploration and finalizing our technical studies for the larger commercial scale operation. The company will likely have to raise money when it begins construction of its larger scale operations. The key sentence that I want you to focus in on if you're thinking about investing in Highcroft Mining or you are already invested in it goes with what I have been saying. Long term, this is going to be, I think, a fine investment. But as CEO Garrett says, we're several years out now from commercial production. So you should not expect any appreciable amount of revenue coming out of this company, I would think at least until 2024. What does that mean? In my opinion, I think that I can afford to wait for the current amount of FOMO, the high retail interest to kind of taper off, which it will because nothing exciting is going to be coming out of this company that I foresee. Adam Aaron and CEO Garrett may have some surprises for us that I don't foresee right now. That remains to be seen, but lacking any additional news, we're not gonna see a payoff from this mine for a couple years. And I'm gonna stick by my patient plan to try and get an entry closer to $1 on Highcroft Mining. All right, now let's talk about Sundial for a minute. I know that I have been talking about Sundial since June or July of last year after it ran up to 13 bucks and then trailed off. Many people got burned or are bag holding Sundial and you want to know what is going to happen with this stock. Let's take a look at the chart and I'll give you my views. I've been saying since July or August of last year that I was not going to buy Sundial until it got below 50 cents. Man, it has been a long wait and I got a lot of hate along the way. It did have a run up back in February 
to $3.33. Congrats to those of you who made money on that. I was patient and I did finally get a position in Sundial just a few weeks ago. I came up with my price entry point for Sundial based on looking at their financials for many years and many quarters, the problems that management has had. And there were a couple, finally, a couple entry points to get in below 50 cents on Sundial, one of them back here in January, and then again a very brief moment in the early part of March. I got in at 49 cents on Sundial, and then right after that, we get the news that the House is looking at the Moore Act, one of the Cannabis Legalization Acts for the United States, and all of the cannabis stocks took off right after that with Sundial running up to 86 cents on that news and Sundial is currently trading at 70 cents. So what all is going on with Sundial right now? They did announce today, March 31st, that they finalized their planned acquisition of Alcana. Alcana is one of the largest private sector retailers of alcohol in North America and the largest in Canada by the number of stores operating locations in Alberta and British Columbia. Alcana also has a majority-owned subsidiary, Nova Cannabis, which also owns or operates a total of 78 cannabis retail stores in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Ontario. So this was kind of already baked in, but it's good to know that that acquisition is now complete. It will provide additional retail and additional expansion opportunities to Sundial. Around the same time that they were finalizing this acquisition, Sundial announced that they would be delaying the shareholder meeting, which was planned for, I think, March 29th or 30th, to on or before April 14th. So now we have the House vote coming up tomorrow on Friday, and we have a delay where now we've got to wait and see what Sundial's earnings are going to look like in about two weeks. Now Sundial has finally made some headway in improving their operations. The last quarter they reported a positive earnings of one penny. That's the first positive earnings in recent memory for Sundial. And their negative earnings was one of the main reasons that I decided that I could wait to pick up Sundial below 50 cents. Two thoughts on Sundial. So the House vote on Friday on the Moore Act probably will go through. There's a similar act being proposed in the Senate by Chuck Schumer. That one probably will not pass. I will also put a link for you in the video description to this article if you want to read through it. It's got a complete synopsis of what is going on with the House vote, which amendments got added to the Moore Act as it goes into the House for the vote tomorrow and which amendments did not get included. And boy, there's a host of them, mostly from the Republicans, but we're not going to focus on the ones that did not get added. The thing that I did want to mention, though, is that there is a similar bill that is going to be going through the Senate, sponsored by Chuck Schumer, and that one is going to be called the Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act. If this act is picked up by the Senate, it's going to need at least 60 votes, which means at least 10 from Republicans to back it in order for it to become law. This is going to be the challenge for this bill to make it through both the House and the Senate. I would not count on that, although I'll say maybe about a 10% chance to make it through the Senate. So then really, what are we counting on for Sundial to get that next leg up, that next momentum to really go above a dollar, which it needs to do for 10 days in order to not be delisted or forced to do a reverse stock split? Well, the key could be the earnings announcement that is coming up soon with Sundial. If the quarterly results are better than last quarter, better than a penny per share, if they blow out expectations, that could definitely be enough momentum to take Sundial over a dollar, maybe a couple, two or three dollars, depending on how many people run in based on the news, if it is good news. It's still uncertain. None of us know exactly what Sundial is going to say. I got in at a great entry point, 49 cents. I'm going to hold through the Sundial earnings, and then we will see where that takes us from there. 
And to close up today's video, I want to touch very briefly on Mullen Automotive. I know there's a lot of eyeballs on this one. I've seen a couple people putting out a lot of content and I want to weigh in with my opinion because surprise, it's a little different than what some other people are saying. As we look at the chart for Mullen, it had a high of almost $16 back in November of 2021. It trailed all the way down to 52 cents by February. And it has got a ton of social media attention, a bunch of people pumping it on Reddit, YouTube, and Twitter. Running it up to $4 just about a week ago, March 22nd. It dipped back down to $2.39 and is currently trading at $2.98. Here's my thoughts on Mullen Automotive. Could it squeeze? Yes, potentially, based on FOMO and retail people piling into this stock. But when I look at Mullen, the CEO talked about a pilot program with a Fortune 500 company in Q2 of this year, that's just weeks or months away, and we'll find out who that company is. A pilot program means a small number of vehicles, probably 100 or less. Typically, these pilots are then followed by a larger purchase if the pilot is successful a year or two later. So although the announcement will be good, it might even run the price up once we find out who it is, it's not gonna translate I don't think, into immediate revenue for Mullen. Moreover, if you look at Mullen's website and look at that very fancy manufacturing facility that they have and then click on it and read the details, this facility is not coming online until 2024 for large-scale production. So I'm not expecting any appreciable revenue out of Mullen at least for two more years. For that reason, I'm staying out of the Mullen play it's too frothy right now, too much FOMO, too much risk of a rug pull. And although I do wish you a lot of luck if you are in this play, I have no dog in this hunt and I'm not buying Mullen at this time. I'll consider it after whatever is going on with this squeeze action plays out. I'll take another look at Mullen in a few weeks or a few months. Again, this is just my opinion. I could be wrong. Might be a massive announcement from the CEO, maybe a thousand vehicles, who knows? Stay tuned. I'm gonna play this one cautious. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I am Tony DeNaro. This has been a little bit longer video than normal. Sorry about that. Lots of topics to cover tonight. I do stream live during market hours, market open, and market close every day of the week. I hope to see you on a future live stream where I answer your questions, no super chats required, and we just have a great time hanging out with a lot of experienced and new investors. I hope to see you there. Don't forget to buy and hold that subscribe button, and I will see you on the next video.